Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I want to make a guide on the Diamond Casino heist, and I want to make a guide on the optional prep specifically. We're not going to be talking about the mandatory preps because those you have to do to start the heist. We're going to be talking about the optional ones. Now, I've noticed a lot of people commenting, should I do this prep? Should I not do this prep? So in this video, I'm going to be covering all three different approaches. I'm going to be covering all the optional preps and which ones I think you should do and which ones I think you should not do. Now, it's important to note this is my personal opinion. This is how I feel on these preps. I've done all these heists different ways. Some of them I've done no preps on. Some of them I've done all the optional preps on. And I've experimented to see what exactly they do and if they help or if they don't really help that much. So it's just my personal opinion. You might disagree with me on which preps to do and which to not to do. But this is just how I feel and I'm going to be explaining why I feel that way. So the first one that I wanted to start out with is I wanted to start out with the aggressive approach. But before I go into that, I also wanted to mention two things. The first thing is acquire masks. I'm not really going to be talking about this much here. Acquire masks are not mandatory. It's optional. You can go to the store, pick up masks that you want for the heist, but you will be given masks anyways. So I'm just not really going to be focusing on that. The second one is security intel. Now security intel you should do for all three heists. Doesn't matter if it's aggressive. Doesn't matter if it's silent and sneaky or the big con. The good thing about it is that you only need to do it once and you have that Vincent mission where you actually have to steal the car back and give it back to Vincent. You do that mission once and you will have all the intel on all the security camera locations. You can always restart the mission if you want to, but you need to do the mission only one time and then you never have to do it again. So that's for security intel. Do it once. You never got to do it again. So moving on here in the aggressive approach, I personally think the most important optional prep is the boring machine. Now, the boring machine involves you stealing that construction vehicle from a construction site or while it's in transit. It's actually a pretty easy mission. You just take the vehicle, drive it to the sewer tunnel, and this truck is decently fast. The mission should not take you long at all. And what this does is it allows you to breach through the sewers and allows you to get right underground, right at the vault level. So you don't have to deal with all the enemies on the upper floors. You don't have to fight your way through the upper floors. You could start right down the vault. The mission is pretty easy. Do the boring machine prep. Now the next prep that's also the second most important prep in my opinion for the aggressive approach is dug and shipments. Dug and shipments you should always do. Always for the aggressive approach. Always. Because on this heist you are going to be fighting enemies. You're always going to be detected. You're always going to have to shoot your way out. And you want the enemies to be as less armed as possible. When you do dug and shipments they won't have all that extra armor. They won't have the bulletproof helmets. And they won't have the crazy weapons like the automatic shotgun. So you want to do dug and shipments. Whenever you're doing the aggressive approach always do dug and shipments. Now for the reinforced armor. Is the reinforced armor worth it? It's up to personal opinion. I don't really think it's personally worth it. I've done the heist no problem without reinforced armor. As you can see right here, my friend and me are doing the heist without reinforced armor. We're st still killing all the enemies in our way. I personally would recommend just having a good gunman, like Packy, you know, having a good decent weapon. You don't really need the reinforced armor. It does give you a little extra health. It does help, don't get me wrong, but it also makes you a little bit slower. I just personally don't think it's worth it. If you think you're not that good at gunfighting, you're not that good at, you know, combat in this game, then maybe get it. But the reinforced armor prep can be really annoying because one of the prep missions involves you actually diving down, swimming through that long tunnel on the Humane Labs, going into Humane Labs, getting it. And you also got to make two pickups. So if you're doing it solo, it's going to take you even longer. Or going to a bunker and fighting a ton of Meriwether enemies and also getting two pickups. I personally don't think you need the reinforced armor. I've done aggressive heist plenty of times without it. Now, as for the other preps like the power drills, for the aggressive approach, I personally don't recommend getting the power drills because you're already running on less time. On the aggressive approach, you have a minute less, so you're not really going to get that much time to hit the safety deposit boxes and really clean it out. You're going to want to focus on whatever the main thing is, the main target that you're taking. Unless it's paintings, those you can get pretty quickly and then get some safety deposit boxes, but again, you're running pretty low on time. Unless you have four people with you on the heist, I wouldn't really bother with the power drills because most safety deposit boxes are between five dollars to $10,000, and that's even if you find something in that box. A lot of boxes, you won't find anything in it, so I wouldn't really bother with the power drills on the aggressive approach. Now, the other ones, the patrol routes. The patrol routes, what this basically does is this shows you where all the enemies are. It shows you the location of them. Even if you're doing it aggressive, even if you get detected, they will all pop up on your radar. Now, is this one worth it? The prep for this isn't that complicated. You just go to an area, take a picture of take a picture of the um, documents in the trunk and you leave. You can do it stealth, but most people, they get caught and just kill all the enemies during it. Now, 
patrol routes. I've done the mission without patrol routes. In this case, you see me doing it without it. And the enemies are not appearing on the map. The only really complicated part of the heist would be when you're trying to breach right down here and you're fighting this first set of enemies. It might get a little difficult trying to find out exactly where each one is. There's not that many enemies, and if you do dug in shipments, you should have no problem fighting your way through them. The only thing you gotta watch out for is you gotta watch out for the doors on the right side. Sometimes they come out there, but you just clear this room out, you just go to the vault, and when you go upstairs, most of the enemies, they will actually be appearing on your map. When they're pretty close to you, they'll appear on your map. So I wouldn't really recommend the patrol routes. Um, you can just shoot your way through, kill the enemies, they don't really, it doesn't really matter them appearing on the map. It does help a little bit. If you want to go through it, get it, but I've done the mission without it. I don't think it's personally necessary. Now, another optional one that's the last one we have is the security passes. Sh should you get security passes on aggressive approach? No, in my opinion, because on aggressive approach, there's only one hack. There's only one door that you have to hack, and that's when you're, you know, when you're leaving. When you're leaving, you clear out the vault, you go in through the boring machine entrance, you just hack that one door, you get out of there. If you're trying to exit through the roof, then you might not need to hack another door, but if you just exit through the staff door, you don't need to hack another door, you only need to hack one. So that's pretty much it for the aggressive approach. I think the three most important ones are the boring machine, security intel, and also the dug in shipments. Dug in shipments, boring machine, and security intel. Security intel, you're always going to have completed. So, dug in shipments and boring machine. The other ones, I don't really think you would need them. I've done the heist without them plenty of times. The next approach that we have on here is the big con. And for the big con, I'm going to be talking about the armored truck approach, the group A approach, because face it, 90% of the time when people do the big con, they're going to be doing the armored truck one. So that's the one I'm going to be focusing on for this video. So what optional prep should you be doing for the big con? The big con is the easiest heist approach out of all of them and actually requires the least amount of optional prep. So let's go down the list. Let's start off with patrol routes. Do you need patrol routes? No, you don't. And the reason you don't need patrol routes is because you don't have to deal with the enemies. When you do the armored truck approach, you just go right inside, you walk past all of the enemies here, just don't bump into them. You walk past all of them, go in the vault, you take everything, as long as you don't trip the alarm inside the vault, you get outside, you walk past all the enemies. Once you get to the top, upper floor here, once you, when you're up here, the alarm will go off, but what happens at this point is the enemies will actually appear on your map. You just wait until this guy walks around the side here, you just melee him from behind, you melee the other guys. And as for Duggan shipments, you don't need Duggan shipments either way. Now, people are going to think I'm crazy for saying don't do Duggan shipments on the Big Con, but you don't need it. I have not done Duggan shipments several times, and the reason you don't need it is because you're not going to be fighting these guys. If you come right behind them, melee them with a gun, that will knock them out right away. And the only two guys that you need to knock out in this heist is when you are leaving the vault, you go up on the upper floor, you walk out here, knock this guy out from behind, go around here, knock this other guy, or sneak past him, and then put on disguises, and you leave. That's it. So you don't need to do patrol routes, you don't need to do duck and shipments. As for the masks, not covering the masks, because again, remember what I said, it's optional, you don't need it. Security intel, again, complete it once, and you have all the camera locations. Power drills, power drills, um... If you have, if you think you have time, if you have like paintings, definitely get power drills if you have paintings because you could clear out a lot of safety deposit boxes. If you have two or three people and you're doing it with cash and gold, with cash, three people, no, don't. If you have four people, get the power drills. If you have three people with gold, you can get the power drills, but you're not going to be really hitting that many boxes. Power drills, kind of up to each player. It's not really that necessary. Now, security passes, security passes, you don't need either. You don't need security passes. All you need to do is just hack one door, and every single time I've done this one, it has actually been the fingerprint one. I don't know if it changes between the fingerprint and the dots, because on the aggressive one, when you try to leave, I've got the dots before, but there's this one hack door. That's all you need to do, just hack this one door. It does have four sets that you need to hack, but once you do that, you're done. You don't have to do a whole mission, because if you do a whole mission, you're going to be wasting more time doing that mission than hacking one door. So just hack that one door, and you just leave through the staff exit. Staff exit is the best way to leave right after, you know, you walk past the locker and the laundry room. And as for the exit disguise, the last prep on here, you don't really need it, but you need it at the same time. And what I mean by that is you don't need the firefighter, you don't need the deuce. Don't bother with deuce or firefighter because those missions, they take a lot of time. The deuce one can actually get kind of complicated. What you should do instead is collect all the playing cards. There is 54 playing cards 
and I believe it's 54 in total. You collect all 54 playing cards. I remember when the Casino DLC came out, I collected all of them. They came out back in July. You get all of those cards, you'll get a decent amount of chips, but on top of that, you will actually unlock permanently the High Roller Outfit. You have the High Roller Outfit, and you can use that always. So you just do those cards, collect all of them. There's videos on YouTube of where to get the playing card, where all the locations are. You get those, and you will have this High Roller's Disguise to leave each time, and you can actually walk past the guards on the upper floor, and they will not attack you. Just don't bump into them, and I wouldn't recommend having your guns out either, because gamblers are going to have your guns. I don't know why the guards don't attack you, because gamblers shouldn't be up on this floor, but the Disguise, it works the exact same way as the Firefighter and the Noose one. So, for the big con, you don't really need to do any preps here. The only preps that I say to do, security intel, but again, you do that once, you have it forever, and the exit disguise, high roller. That's it. You can do this heist no problem without doing the optional preps. I've done it easily. This heist is very easy, very quick to do, no problem. And the final heist that we have here is the silent and sneaky one. And I did this one with doing the minimum preps. I had security intel and I had security passes because I already knew how bad this would be without doing the passes. Now this one, this is where things get complicated. Now let's go down the list. Or patrol routes. Should you get patrol routes? Yes, you should. And the reason you should get patrol routes is because you always start on this floor. Regardless of where you enter, you will have to at least go through this floor. You will always go through this floor, and the enemies actually change locations. Each time you start the heist, they will be in the same location. But each time you begin a brand new silent and sneaky heist, they could be in a different location. So they're not always in the same places up here. There's usually one guy in the control room, one guy that's walking back and forth. But before that area, the lobby area, there's around three guys there and they change positions. And sometimes there's the left side door that's open, sometimes there's the right side door that's open. So you should get the patrol routes because they'll tell you where the guys are walking around. And this will help you a lot, especially when you're doing it with the stealth approach here. Stealth approach, get patrol routes, it'll tell you where the enemies are. As for the downstairs area, the downstairs area, the enemies are pretty much always in the same place, but it would still help out a lot. And the Duggan shipments, you should get it. Duggan shipments, you should get it. Even if you're planning on doing completely stealth without getting detected, Duggan shipments is important because there's a lot of enemies that you cannot headshot, a lot of enemies that you can't kill quietly. You could kill them by walking up behind them or using the tranquilizer dart with the drone, but it could just be a giant pain not being able to shoot them, and instead you gotta sneak past them. As you can see right here in this room, I can't take out that guy all the way down there. He doesn't see me, so I'm able to sneak past him, but then when we actually leave the vault, the guy changes positions, and he's right there near the desk. I had to use a tranquilizer drone on him and then go past him that way. So dug in shipments and patrol routes, I do recommend. Security intel, not going to talk about it again because you complete it once, you always have it. Power drills, kind of the same thing. If you, if you feel that you can hit the safety deposit boxes, go for them. Security passes. Now, security passes are the most important prep. They're the most important prep on this one. The reason they're so important is because you are going to have to hack three doors. Three doors if you do not do this one. Do that one mission and save yourself the trouble. And these doors, guess what? They are going to be this one. They're not the fingerprint one. They're the most complicated one, the dot hacking. This is the one that you're going to have to go through. And you can see right here what a nightmare this is. I managed to complete it. And to be fair, you can use your phone and you can take a picture of your TV and you can get the combinations there, but it still wastes so much time. It would just be so much easier to complete that security pass prep and you can just use a key card, go through those three doors. The first door, when you enter the control room, second door, when you go downstairs, and then third door, when you're going to be leaving. So do security passes. Very important for the stealth. Masks, again, not going to talk about that because masks, again, optional. Now, for the EMP and the infiltration suits, I'm going to talk about both of these together. Now, the infiltration suits, they let you rappel down and they also give you night vision. The EMP lets you turn off the power. If you're going to be using the EMP, then I strongly recommend using the EMP downstairs in the vault room. That is the area where you have to 
kill the most amount of enemies to get past them quietly. You have to kill a bunch of people in this room because you're not going to be able to sneak past these people. You have to get rid of some people in this room. The EMP will be the most effective. If you're going to use the EMP, you might as well get the infiltration suits. You don't necessarily need the infiltration suits and the EMP in order to get past these guys. As you guys see right here, I did it without the EMP and without the infiltration suits, but it just makes it easier. So I personally would recommend the EMP and the infiltration suits for players that aren't good at stealth. For people that aren't good at stealth, I would recommend getting the EMP and the infiltration suits because it'll make the last area a lot less challenging. But that is pretty much it for my guide there. The most important preps for the Stylet and Sneaky one, they are going to be, they are going to be the security passes, Dug in shipments and security intel. Steel EMP and infiltration suits, I'm gonna put at the bottom here, kind of optional, but I'll also make a special mention because they do help, but you don't necessarily need it. If you're good at stealth, you have no problem doing stealth. You wouldn't really need the infiltration suits and the EMP. I've done it without those two, but if you're not good at stealth, I would get them. And that is pretty much it for this guide, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, enjoy my con, subscribe. And if you guys have any other questions about the preps or the missions, let me know down below. I'll try to answer as many people as I can. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And again, I'm sorry for my voice. I'm still sick, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.